Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. It is once again that time of year for March Madness content. We are about three and a half weeks away from Selection Sunday. Actually, no, we're right on three weeks away from Selection Sunday, and we cannot be more excited. Um, this is the place to be if you're trying to win your bracket group. If you're not, you know, you don't have to watch the videos. But if you are trying to win your bracket group, we're here for you, and today we're starting off with three teams that will probably ruin your bracket. And you can kind of get a hint of which teams I'm talking about, but stick around for the full video um, to find out why. The top three most overrated teams in March, number one, Purdue. Yes, again, Purdue. They obviously went out against Farley Dickinson last year. We called it that they were going to be overrated last year, but they... We didn't think they were going to lose in the first round. Um, they're going to be better than last year. Lance Jones was a great pickup for them. Um, the Kim Palm checks out. They're number two in offensive rating, number 21 in defensive rating, and third in strength of schedule. Uh, however, there are some other things that we do not like, um, such as having an unathletic center that, you know, even though he is seven foot four, he's pretty Im immobile. If you watch him in some of these highlights, they are 175th in pace, so that also checks out. And Edie is the runaway player of the year once again, averaging 23.3 points, 11.7 rebounds, 1.8 assists, 2.3 blocks. Farley Dickinson was kind of a bad matchup. Um, they ran him off the court. Uh, they also have, like we said, Lance Jones. They also have Braden Smith, who's one of the best point guards in America. As a sophomore this year, he's improved his jumper. He's averaging 12.8 points per game, 5.7 rebounds, and 7.1 assists. The dude is an absolute monster, one of my favorite point guards in college basketball. And then Lance Jones, like I said, gives him another 13 points per game, 2.7 rebounds, 2.3 assists, another three-point shooter they can have around Edie. So I don't think they lose in the first round, obviously, this year. However, do I see them making it to the second weekend? Probably not. Matt Painter does not have a great March Madness record, and a lot of times the determining factor in these matchups is going to be the coach. Looking at their stats, they have a couple other guys that are contributors to the roster, but really only you know, about six deep. Sometimes Miles Colvin will come in and give them some minutes, but Fletcher Lawyer... Um, Mason Gill is really the only other two scores, and they have that other big there. Um, but if you look at their good wins from this year, from the calendar year 2024, number nine, Illinois. And Illinois is really the only Big Ten team that I like. So that's a good win, but they have losses at Nebraska and at Ohio State. Most of their good wins came early on back in November and December. Now, number two is Wisconsin, and we are fading the Big Ten as a whole, other than Illinois. I like Illinois, they're very senior heavy, and they got a guy in Corbin Hawkins who is very versatile. Same thing with Terrence Shannon. As for the Badgers, they've lost five of their last seven games, and it is not looking good right now. A.J. Storr has been really good for them. 16.3 um, points per game, four rebounds, and one assist in his first year in Madison after transferring in, uh, just like over half of college basketball this year, but it has not been great otherwise for the Badgers as of late. Looking at some of their other production, um, Tyler Wall and Stephen Crawl, both inside, um, both big men, obviously, both giving them about 11 points, um, over six rebounds a game and a couple of assists. Klesma is their shooter, averaging about 10 points per game. They got Chucky Hepburn. He runs the show, eight points, about four rebounds. And then they got a couple of other guys there also contributing in. But they have fallen to 22nd in the net rankings, and they are 3-7. and seven on the road this year that is not good especially when of course you're not getting any home games in march their best win was december 2nd and that is not good uh it was against marquette but still their best win being that like that early in the season is not great looking at kim palm they're 22nd overall in that so the same as the net 17th offensive rating which is good 44th defensive rating not terrible third strength of schedule the kim palm metrics you know, they check out. However, this is a team that is fading down the stretch. They are not looking good right now. As you can see here, over their last 11 games, they are 5-6. and six, With their only wins being at home against Maryland, Ohio State, Michigan State, Indiana, and then they won at Minnesota by two. They lost at Penn State. They lost at Nebraska. Lost to Purdue at home. Lost at Michigan. Lost at Rutgers and lost at Iowa. Not good. They've got... A road trip to Indiana and then Illinois and Rutgers at home. And then finally Purdue on the road to close the season out. We'll see if they can get them another quality win. But as of right now, with their best win being December 2nd, I am fading the Badgers big time. They're currently a five seed cooking up a perfect 5-12 upset. 
Now, the third and final team I highly recommend staying away from in March is Alabama. Defense travels in March. That's the bottom line. You don't see these explosive offenses having success in March, which is one reason that San Diego State beat Alabama last year. Um, Alabama has the number one offense and the number 97 defense. That is not good whatsoever. Um, they are number Seven in Ken Palm still, however. And another thing that I don't like about Alabama, it's a half-court game in March, but they really rely on tempo as they have the 12th best tempo in the country to win them games. I don't know if NATO's coaching style is going to work out postseason. Now, it's obviously proven to be good in the regular season, but in March, it's all about defense. It's all about a half-court game, and it, his, his teams don't do that, or at least they haven't in his first few years in Tuscaloosa. 20 and a half points per game for Mark Sears, though he is the guy to watch for the Crimson Tide. They also have Aaron Estrada, Grant Nelson, uh, Rylan Griffin, and Latrell Wrightsell, um, all averaging nine or more points per game in a loaded offense. Um, however, like I said, it's defense that matters in March. They are six in the net, but they're three and seven in quad one and four and four on the road, um, including getting 117 points hung on them at Kentucky. You score 95 points, you should not be losing by 22. Uh, they also get almost blown out at Auburn. Um, they do get a good win against Florida at home, but we'll see if they are able to continue that stretch with a win at Florida. Um, like we said, Aaron Estrada and Grant Nelson are two really good offensive guys, but... You know, defensively, this team is just not good. They are on the number three line right now, which if I'm a team that's very sound defensively as a 14 seed, this is a team I'm looking to blow out. Y'all let me know your thoughts, though, um, on all of these teams or some more teams y'all think you're, that are overrated down in the comment section below. Make sure, you know, just go leave a comment. Uh, we're, we're trying to talk all things March Madness. I'd love to hear y'all's point of views, maybe some sleeper teams. The next video on this channel will be out probably in you know five to seven days and it will be on three underrated teams in march madness so we're not going to do any like sleepers for the lower level conferences but we'll do some power five power six um maybe underrated teams it could make a deep run not necessarily dark horses to win a championship but teams that could get to the sweet 16 that are you know uh, between the 6 and 11 lines. So make sure to come back for that. Make sure to like button and hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy today's video at any point. Um, like we said, leave me a comment down below. We're trying to hit about 100 likes on today's video, trying to get this March Madness content out in the algorithm. And with all that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hit that notification bell as well to come back later so you are informed and when we post all our March Madness videos. And with that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.